Good morning, everybody, and we are back again with the Mark V R32. Woo! And on today's episode, we're going to learn how to remove the oil pan and swap it out with a new one. So let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's Garage. This is a car that's been here now for a minute, about a week. Uh, we did coilovers, we did the new control arm uh, bushings, and now we're gonna do the oil pan. Since I found a bunch of other issues with this car, I might as well service it and make sure it's taken care of before I lose my home. Um, this has the infamous 3.2 liter VR6 engine in it, um, also known as little V6, but it's actually a VR6. Uh, 24 valve as well. Um, one of the coolest cars out there, more, not as cool as the Mark IV R32, but still one of the coolest car, cars you can get from the Volkswagen family that's not common. Um, so today the oil pan is uh, quite unique on this car because it uses triple square bits instead of a 10 millimeter or Allen heads. So that's going to be fun. Uh, number two, this thing was not taken care of at wherever last place they went to go get an oil change. Uh, looks like they impacted it on the, uh, the oil drain plug and it, they pretty much stripped, stripped the crud out of it. So we're gonna work and give it some good love, give it a good cleaning. Um, probably gonna do an engine bay cleaning as well. Uh, something quick and short, you know. Uh, that way we take care of it and make sure the car is properly loved before it leaves my home. Um, so let's get to so work. First, we're going to start by removing the uh, the T25s all over the belly pan. Um, I believe in the back it has T30s. Um, you can see already right here all the oil is dripping on the belly pan. It's so bad. I'm not even kidding. It's literally all over the entire back of the belly pan. The whole back of the whole car is soaked in oil. It's so bad. Uh, it, it pains my heart every time I I look underneath this car because it's such a cool car um, and again so unique and, and uh, uncommon to see one of these on the road so I'm super happy that my friend let me work on his car and get it taken care of for him so you guys can see that belly pan is just soaked in oil and keep in mind I just cleaned this and you can see it's already just covered in oil I just wiped down the uh, drain plug here, but see this? Oh, well right now it's tight for some reason. <laughs> I was able to turn this by hand, uh, righty tighty and lefty loosey forever because they stripped the crud out of it. Uh, we're gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna pull this guy off because since it's so stripped, I'm curious on how this is gonna come out without, uh, um, I don't know. I, hopefully I know how to pull this out without damaging anything. Um, you'll see here, as we look down here, see these bolts? These are triple squares all the way around. They're all the way around the entire pan. There's no, um, yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is there's nothing in the way uh, besides this bracket right here. <laughs> oh, And they also damage the uh, oil filter housing right here as well uh, it's, they looks like they, they impact it on because you can see this is stripped so you guys can see that that hole is stripped now because uh, you're supposed to be able to put an allen in there and pretty much drain this prior to um, uh, pulling the filter out that way you just don't make a gigantic mess you know so yeah it looks like they impacted that on or they just you know sent it and call it a day so this has to be replaced so he got me a new one of these this is super easy and a new filter um the whole pan's going to be replaced uh we got to take off the this bracket right here has to come off which is holding the secondary air injection so this bracket has two bolts here and there's one all the way over here in this top corner so we're going to get that and then um it should be able to just move the the secondary injection just kind of out of the way once we do that. Once this is removed, we just have to unplug this. He got a new sensor with it. So we just unplug this and move it out of the way. Uh, and that looks like all it is currently for this job. 
Uh, that's really annoying. The belt is literally covering that one bolt right there. Okay, well, that's, that's awesome engineering, Volkswagen. Didn't factor that in, huh, guys? <laughs> Let's see what's back here. It looks like there's nothing over here in the way. No, no, nothing over here. So the back side of the oil pan looks like it's clear. Um, it's just what's in front of it. So, so we have this bracket that has to be removed. We have to replace this guy, and then uh, we'll drain whatever's left of the oil that's in here, and then we'll get this replaced. So not too bad, not too bad. All right, so we're down here now, and. The bolt was so stripped that I had to remove the oil level sensor to get the oil out of the pan. That's how bad that thing was. I even used an impact gun. I even tried using a, prying, using a screwdriver to pry and get the threads to start. Nothing. Whoever shop did this oil change did a good number on this car. Um, so I'm going to put the oil sensor back in so I don't have any oil dripping all over me while I'm working. And then we're gonna work on taking off this bracket right here next. And once this bracket is off, we'll be able to remove the oil pan and then proceed forward on getting this pan replaced. All right, so you're gonna need a T30 uh, Torx here and then an M10 triple square for the one that sits right up here in this little hole. Uh, that should give you enough space to pull pretty much the SIA pump kind of out of the way so the oil pan can just drop. Um, no need to take it all apart. Um, just take those three bolts and gives you the ability to move the uh, bracket out of the way um, I just noticed there's two 16s here one here and here. I don't see another one um, That hold the pan as well. So you'll see here and here two more 16 millimeter um, Bolts here. They're big bolts. They're simple ones. So give you guys a heads up on that next we're gonna start removing the um we're gonna start unbolting the oil pan first. I'm gonna leave these two in, uh, leave them for last, and then that's it. Let's see what happens. So I found one more 16, guys. It's all the way over here in this corner, uh, right here. Um, so what I ended up doing was giving a wobble extension, and this is short, a short, a shallow 16, and then uh, about a four inch extension here, and I can hit it at an angle like that, and I was able to get this guy out right here. No problems. Um, so now it's an M8 triple square to get all these bolts. Now what's alarming is that this is your M8 and you have this M8. So if you can get a hold of one of these guys here, this will be super beneficial for the ones on the back, back here, because you'll see these notches right here. Um, You'll be able to use a um, kind of a, a, a 13 um, deep socket with an extension and you should be able to reach these a lot easier. Since this is such a fat little sucker here, you might have an issue getting it in there. Um, so give yourself at least these two options during this, um, this process to get those guys out, okay? All right, we're down to the last three. You guys can see here one, two, and three. The problem here is neither of the two sockets that I have work. So I'm going to see if I can make something that can get me in here, here and here to get it because nothing works right now to get into these holes um, and be able to pretty much get them out. Uh, it's, it's near impossible. So now I got to figure out what to do to get these three bolts out to get the oil pan off. I already got every other bolt off except these three. So bear with me. We'll figure out what to do next. All right. So we're back. Mike, you're working better. All right. We're back. And now I figured out a little trick. So you need a six millimeter extended Allen. You can get these anywhere, okay? They fit flawlessly on the triple square M8s. So I didn't have to go buy a special tool. They fit perfect and they actually come off just flawlessly. 
So that was done. I was able to remove every single bolt on the pan without any issues. I'm down to the last two 16s right here that hold the pan in place right here. And then we're gonna have to pry it off with a uh, flathead screwdriver because it is still RTV to the engine. So um, we gotta be able to take it off and not make a huge mess. Let's see here. Trying to find a spot where I can pry on this. Cause I don't care what's gonna happen to this pen, honestly. So I'm gonna damage it for all I care. I just want it off this car because this thing's already destroyed. Let's see here. No. Hmm. I'm making sure there's nothing else bolted onto it. I don't see anything. Let's see, no. It's a flat surface all the way across. I know I'll look weird doing this, but I gotta double check everything. And I don't see anything that would give me an issue here, so. I just don't see why it's not coming off. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Found a good little spot. I'll show you guys in just a second to pry on this. All right, so right now, it's currently caught on the belt. That's all I see. That would give me an issue. But I don't think that's the problem. It should be able to come up in that direction from this side out. unbolted there we go there we go you just need a little finessing so so we're gonna let this sit for a little bit so we don't make a massive mess. We want this to drip for a little while and then we'll come back, clean it all off. We're gonna clean the whole bottom of the uh, engine, make sure there's no RTV. Uh, we want a properly clean surface. So when we get to actually start removing, I mean reinstalling it that the bottom of this engine is perfect so we have a really, really good seal. Um, Definitely looks like factory RTV because this is the red stuff. This is the only stuff that you get from Germany. Um, so I'm extremely happy uh, that nothing was been, no, no, no one else has done the oil pan on this car. So the oil changes I've been frequent because I can see all really, really clean, super clean surfaces in here. So you know what? We're good for right now. We'll call this done for the moment. I'll be back when, uh, when we get ready to start. Um, um, cleaning everything up and then putting new RTV and then sealing this new pan 
and sealing the new pan in place. All right, so with the light, nice brand new razor blade, go through the entire surface and remove as much of the old RTV as you can. And then with the good rag, uh, scrub pretty much the re leftover residue. Now, if you want to go the extra mile, which I would probably recommend, is grab a clean bolt and chase every one of these holes through because what's going to happen, there's a lot of uh, RTV in these little holes. And what's gonna what can what can potentially happen is that this RTV can can either clog up or give you a false like torque spec because they're jamming the bolt or they're pretty much causing the bolt to jam. So I recommend chasing all these whole threads and cleaning them all up as best you can. And then we'll show you guys what to do next. Alright, so here's the brand new pen. And we got some brand new RTV. Now this is the German stuff. This is dealer RTVs. This is what you want to put on your oil pan. Uh, this is a big tube, but we don't need this much. I mean, when you put RTV on an oil pan, it's minimal, guys. Don't go crazy on this stuff. It's extremely minimal. The Remember, on this situation, less is more when you do RTV on an oil pan. So what we're going to do is you're going to slap on like a nice nice light bead all the way across the entire pan I'm talking about really light then you grab your finger and you're gonna smear it as flat as possible you want to coat the entire surface as smooth as possible okay once you do that take it on over to your uh, your engine slap it on uh, torque it to spec and then let it sit for a half an hour to an hour before you add any oil to your oil pan. And the reason for this is because we want to make sure this RTV starts curing and actually sealing. We don't want this to um, to seal, like start curing and you add oil and it just starts seeping through. We want to make sure that the sealant actually does its job prior to actually putting oil into it. So I'll show you guys what to do next. So now that we have the um, pan all RTV'd, we have to immediately take this to the engine and bolt it right up as fast as we can and then torque it all down the spec and let it sit for a couple hours. All right, so we just removed the oil filter housing with a brand new one. Um, and I used a, what is it? A one and seven sixteenth socket to get it off. Um, again, the previous shop that took care of this car did the oil change impacted the this little allen bit here this thing only goes on very lightly they stripped the crud out of this thing god knows how much effort they put on this so i told him to get a new one um just for safety's sake um i don't know if there's any other issues with this but we should be able to thread it in by hand as far as possible I mean like pretty dang far to get to the o-ring that's where you actually have effort and then you put this on at 18 newton meters uh, i believe that's like 10 or 12 foot pounds and that's it this is already tightened down so we just gotta get this snug and then time to add oil and get this bad boy back up and running so new oil pan brand new rtv sealant uh new uh oil level sensor brand new oil filter housing cap uh, new oil filter. Now we just gotta add oil and then fire this car up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my gosh. Um, these guys are at 12 foot pounds. These little uh, 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 oil pan bolts. You have all the ones, the 16s, the three that are underneath here. And that's it. Um, the two bolts here. I just get these snug. And the one up here that holds the... Um, Secondary air injection uh, the triple square that goes in here and all that is done uh, Pretty much add your oil and fire it up. So we'll be right back. All right, the car is running and We're pretty much waiting to get it to temp and see what happens and see if we have no oil drips uh, Currently, I don't see anything That could be an issue But we got to wait until the car pretty much runs for a couple minutes and then let it sit and see if we can see any oil drips 
Uh, if we don't see any oil drips, that means the problem has been solved and this car is ready to go home. All right, so what happened earlier in the uh, video is that I actually got a little busy, got uh, distracted with Dominic's car. So I forgot to give you guys the final, pretty much, uh, results of the car. So no oil leak. Yay. Uh, we drove the car around. We made sure that we got car up to temp. We drove it on turns and made sure there was no oil coming out of either the top of the pan or on the sides because you want to make sure it sloshes around enough and you want to make sure it doesn't leak out of the oil drain pan because it's a brand new oil pan. We don't want anything to go wrong with it. So big plus, excited that pretty much everything came together the way it was supposed to. Everything was flawless during the entire process. Uh, I freaked out a little bit at the end or towards the middle because of the not having the right tool to remove the M8 triple squares and using a six millimeter Allen worked flawlessly. So in this scenario, okay, in this scenario, if you don't have any M8 triple squares, you can use a six millimeter Allen and you can torque them and remove them without any issues. So really cool tip. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching this episode of Pinchy House Garage. From my family to yours, big hug, big thanks. Peace out, everyone. And as always here at Pinchy House Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Deuces!